Don't tell anyone, but I'm gonna give you a sneak peek into Windows 365, how it works, and what you need to know to start using it. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. A lot of you have been asking about the new Windows 365 and how it compares to Azure Virtual Desktop. So let me explain. Windows 365 is a cloud PC as a service, which is a new way to experience Windows 10 and eventually Windows 11 when that becomes available later this year. And it shouldn't be surprising that the power behind Windows 365 is Microsoft Azure, specifically the Azure Virtual Desktop Service, along with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And this new cloud service will give you a new managed experience for all of your images, apps, data, and settings for your users. And all of this is providing you with a powerful, personalized, full Windows experience that runs in the cloud and for your users on any device. And I'll have several links that I'll share with you during this video, so stick with me right to the end. And uh, if you all want a deeper dive than what I show you here, then help this video get to 10,000 likes, and I'll work with the product team to get them to come and maybe do a special episode of the Azure Academy or Desktops in the Cloud. So comment down below with what you want to see. The Windows 365 setup begins with licensing. Now, the exact details of the licenses and the costs and all that aren't quite public yet, and what we know so far is that the licensing will be per user per month. So let's jump in. Now, once you've purchased your licenses, you have to assign them to your users to make use of them. And you can do this in Azure Active Directory or here in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So let's click on our users on the left and then select Active Users. And then we wanna find the user we wanna assign our Cloud PC license to, and we'll pick John Doe. And then over here on the right side, you wanna to go to License and Apps, and then check the box for the Windows 365 license that you wanna use. And we'll pick this enterprise license over here. Now notice in the license name, we have the number of CPU cores, the amount of RAM and disk as well. So it looks like there'll be a lot of options that'll fit all of your needs. So let's click Save at the bottom, and here's the first link that I'll share with you so you can read all about the features of Windows 365, and that's on their blog, www.microsoft.com forward slash Windows 365. And now that we have our user licenses assigned, we need to get our Windows 365 environment set up. And like with all things in the cloud, that begins with our virtual network. So here now in the Azure portal, I've got a resource group that I've created called CPC-RG. Inside there, we've got a virtual network that I've set up, and that's called CPC-VNet. And if you go inside the VNet, inside there, we have a target subnet for Windows 365 that we're going to use called Subnet 1. And all of that is just standard virtual network stuff. Now to complete the rest of the setup, we need to jump over here to the Endpoint Manager Admin Center. And the user that you're logging in here with needs a few Azure permissions in order for the rest of this stuff to work. And that would be network contributor on that virtual network that we just created in Azure, owner rights over the resource group that we're in, and at least reader rights on the subscription. Once you have all that set up, go to devices, and then you see the new provisioning section over there on the left, and you wanna select Windows 365. At the top here, we've got several items, and the one we need to start with first is on-premise network connection. And this is what's going to connect our virtual network in Azure to the Windows 365 service so you can create all your cloud PCs and they can join your domain. And click the Create Connection button, and the first thing we need to do is give our connection a name. Let's call this the East US Office Location, and then click the drop-down and select your Azure subscription, and then we'll select the CPC Resource Group, then we'll select the CPC Virtual Network, and finally, Subnet 1. And then click Next. Now we need the domain name and credentials for your Active Directory. So for this example, we'll pick contoso.com as our domain name, and then put in the appropriate AD username in the UPN format, which is admin at contoso.com, and then put in the appropriate password, and then click Next. Now review all of your settings, and when you're ready, click the Next button again. And in just a few moments, the connection between Windows 365 and the Azure Virtual Network will be completed. Now even though that looked really, really easy, there's a lot of things that just happened under the covers. And you can see that if you click on where it says Checks Successful. And Windows 365 does this through something called the Watchdog Service. 
And this service is going to be checking things and running in the background and will even do some automated stuff that you would normally have to do for yourself, not only in the setup, but also in the troubleshooting. And it'll try to resolve some of those issues for you if it can. So here's the whole list of things it did to make this setup possible. Set up the Azure AD Connect configuration, your network access was verified, DNS resolution was set up properly, rights to create a computer account in the proper OU in Active Directory, the subnet range to verify that there's enough IP address space for all of your PCs. And like I said, if something changes in your environment, the watchdog service will try to fix it for you or send your admins a notification. So now that our basic environment is all set up, we can start building our cloud PCs. And that's done through a provisioning policy. To do this, you need to be an Intune administrator. And if you're not sure if you are, then you can go to your users and search for your target user. Then over on the left, click on your assigned roles. And if you don't see it here, you can just search for Intune and then select Intune administrator and click add at the bottom. With that out of the way, let's go back to our devices and then back to Windows 365. And at the top, we wanna to select our provisioning policies tab and then create a new policy. In the name field, we'll call this East US Office, and then click the on-premise network connection dropdown and select the East US Office location. That's what we called it when we created it a moment ago. Click next, and from here you have to select your image type. And this can be from the Azure gallery images or your own custom images as well. So for today, I'll pick from the gallery. Now you can select whichever image you want to from ones that have all the M365 apps and Teams pre-installed or a lighter operating system with some optimizations. And since I want as much of the work done for me as possible, I'll pick the top one. And then hit the select button at the bottom. Click next and on the assignments tab, let's click here to add a group to our policy. Now from the picker, we're gonna select our finance group and that's the group that John Doe happens to be in. But remember, we only have assigned a license to John Doe specifically, not the entire finance group. So only those users who have the Windows 365 license assigned are going to get PCs and be able to use them. Which also means that you can have easier management if you assign your licenses to groups. And then here you make a group assignment. That way you only have to manage one group, making your management simpler. So click next and then review your settings. Once you're happy, click Create. And in just about 20 minutes or so, your cloud PCs will be ready to use. And once the provisioning is done, we've got some options that we can provide to our users to interact with their new cloud PCs. Let's go to windows365.microsoft.com and sign in as the user John Doe. And there is the cloud PC that we've just provisioned with all of the appropriate resources assigned. And you can click on this little settings gear on the cloud PC and you've got some more options today. John is able to restart his VM on his own, rename it, or do some basic troubleshooting. And the permissions for the restart are done by granting the user permission for self-service upgrades. We're gonna save that and some of the other particulars for that deep dive video I mentioned earlier. Now to launch your cloud PC, go ahead and click the open in browser button. Ah, and now this looks familiar. And if you look at the web address here, you can see this is the Azure Virtual Desktop web client. And here we have all of the options that you're used to in ABD. Select whatever you want and hit the allow button. Then we'll enter the password here and then click submit. And once your credentials have been verified, you are logged on to your cloud PC. And of course you have the same kind of interface options that you do in the AVD client normally, like going to full screen and all of those pre-baked M365 apps and Teams are over there on the left. So we can open up Teams and we can also open Outlook down there in the taskbar or whatever else you need to be working with. And since these cloud PCs are all managed through Microsoft Endpoint Manager, you can assign any other applications or policies to manage the environment as needed. Now you're not limited to just this web interface, you can also use the Azure Virtual Desktop Windows client. So we'll just open the app and subscribe like always, enter the creds for our user, and then we can start our cloud PC session. And the last link that I have for you is a real good one. This is aka.ms forward slash W365 demo. And that's where you can walk through the Windows 365 experience yourself, which is actually what I've been showing you here. And the guided tutorial will help you with even some more information. And doing this now before the service becomes available means you'll be ready to hit the ground running. 
So Windows 365, what did you think about it? Comment down below and let me know. And if you've liked what you've seen here and you want to see more, then share this video with others so we can get to that goal I mentioned earlier. And there's even more links in the video description down below so you can learn more about this service. And you can also check out this video on Microsoft Mechanics where Scott Manchester took us through a lot of stuff about the service, including some pretty cool animations and demos. So check that out and I will see you here next time. Happy learning.